Hey there, Scorpio, Sun, Moon, and Rising. It's time to have a look and see what is going on when it comes to your monthly astrological forecast for May 2022. And just a quick reminder that if you ever want to get a session with me, you do need to go on ahead to my website. It's integrativemysticism.com, or you can follow the links in the down bar below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You know I appreciate it. And of course, engagement helps this channel out a lot. So what's going on when it comes to your month of May? Well, we have the Sun in Taurus, for the first 20 days of the month, your seventh house of partnerships. So this is your closest one-on-one -on -one involvements and connections. Boyfriend, girlfriend, BFF, business partner, husband, wife, roommate, all the people you have those kinds of established connections with. And with the sun bringing attention, enhancement, and support to these areas, there is a huge focus on optimizing the atmosphere, the environment, and the very dynamics of all of your closest one-on-one -on -one engagements because attention enhancement and support indicates a transformation to the way business gets done here whether this is a transformation or an evolution of the bond itself moving things in a direction where we're becoming more established or uh, more comfortable in our arrangement itself or possibly putting ourselves in a position to become more prosperous and more productive this is also a time where you're going to notice a lot of new glue coming to strengthen bonds in all of your closest one-on-one -on -one connections focusing on creating stronger friendships as well as also bringing in a lot of of opportunities to clear and neutralize any kind of shadows or uncomplimentary influences that may have or you know once upon a time settled in to these relationships this is also a time where a lot of lightness a lot of levity a lot of fun is coming in to bring in some of that organic, wholesome simplicity to a lot of your connections if things have become a bit overcomplicated or maybe certain relationships have become a bit more task oriented or maybe there's just been a lot going on and we've not been able to get any quality time. This is going to be the month where a lot of environmental, atmospheric and systemic changes are occurring in order to fix that. We also see this attracting ideal one-on-one -on -one connections for those of you that are looking for those, whatever capacity, whether they're BFFs, whether they're business partnerships or alliances or romantic partnerships, whatever needs to be set up to get all of the ducks in a row, you know, getting all of the clutter and again, all of the uncomplimentary influences out of the way, all of the old habits or old dynamics that need to shift purged out and attracting in the best matches possible. After the 20th, we've got the sun entering Gemini, which is your eighth house of shared resources, passive income, as well as intimacy and self-employment earnings. And with the sun here, we are seeing you drawing in a fair amount of coin, Scorpio. A lot of money is coming in through outside of a primary salary revenue source. Now, this could, of course, be something that you have going on through your own business, whether you are running it yourself or you're involved in a partnership or a collaboration, or this could be coming through a supplemental income program, such as maybe tips, commissions, sales, or incentives. But what's also cool about this is, is that we are seeing an increase, yes, in par partner contributions, economically speaking, because there's also going to be some very positive news this month about their income situation also being on the rise, whether it be uh, a business partner or a romantic partner. We have Mars, the planet of action, passion, energy, and that obstacle clearing driving force cruising through. Pisces, your fifth house of love, romance, and of course, recreation, creativity, and your relationships with your kids all the way up through the 24th of the month. And when we have Mars in the fifth house, there is a big focus on bringing out more courageous activity and a lot of focus on knocking down walls and obstacles that stand between us and having the ideal relationship arrangement possible. So with this plus the sun at the same time, we are seeing a lot of transformations going on, especially in the way we look at each other, spend time with each other. Mars is knocking down obstacles to intimacy and any kind of maybe interference or any sort of uh, issue that has maybe come between you 
and finding the ideal love situation or maybe you and a partner and a specific goal or agenda that you have or maybe something that has come between you and one of your children, whatever the problem is, the cause, the course, and the source is going to be brought up challenged and cleared by this Mars energy because Mars also focuses on permanent solutions and making sure that everyone is set up well going forward. This is also a time for knocking over any kind of obstacles that may stand in the way of maybe getting a creative project off, you know, off the ground if it's something's been maybe sitting idle. Overall, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous month. And we're also seeing a lot more passion and devotion coming from partners and from our kids, as well as even potential new mates as well. After the 24th, we've got Mars cruising on into Aries, which is your sixth house of work, your reputation, your schedule, the teams that you're on, as well as the services that you provide in the world. And things are getting quite competitive for you Scorpio people, because with Mars in the sixth house, you're getting into a space where you are working around the clock. All right, whenever Mars is in a work area, such as houses six, 10, or two, in this case, six for you, we are seeing an opportunity for you to rise through the ranks of prominence by racking up a lot of big wins. However, with Mars here, that means overtime for everyone, but yes, also a lot more money. Mars is also going to be helping you to clear some kind of lock or some kind of stasis, something that has been stuck in your worker financial progress of late. And we're also seeing Mars drawing in some very powerful teammates and very powerful work associations that are also going to be with you all the way. Just keep in mind with Mars in the sixth house, things can become a bit competitive on the in the workplace or in your workforce or even in your field in general if you run your own business. Rivalries are sure to flare up during this time. And while it's important to know how to sport, you know, or compete sportingly, we want to make sure that we're not getting caught up in any petty dramas. We have Venus, the planet of love, favor, popularity, and affection. Also in your sixth house of work, your reputation and your schedule, a lot of you may be finding love through work or on the job or maybe on a potential partner's job if you are looking for a new love. This is also time for a lot of you Scorpio people to give yourselves a chance to maybe get a bit of a raise in terms of what you are receiving as compensation for your work. Your popularity is soaring at this time. Venus in your sixth house of reputation is actually putting you in a space where you're in very high demand. And so that means that you might want to be ready to ask a bit more for your supply. This is also a time where a lot of new accoutrements are coming to you that are going to make life a lot easier on the job. So while we are working a lot more with Mars there, we are able to also achieve a lot more without having to put in as much effort. Whether these accoutrements are tools or maybe some kind of new system or new policy that's gonna work out very nicely for you to ease things up, this is a time where your entire image is going through a transition transformation as well as your work ethic. We have Mercury, the planet of communications, speed and productivity, behaving in a very strange way this month. Mercury is going to be direct in your eighth house of shared resources, passive income and intimacy, Gemini, through the 10th, then retrograde here from the 10th to the 22nd, and then retrograding all the way back into your partnership sector uh, from the 22nd of May through the 3rd of June when Mercury turns direct. So let's take it one at a time. Mercury direct in the 8th house is a wonderful time to speed up the accomplishment of some kind of major private business or financial goal that you have been working to try to maybe bring forth into being this year, but maybe you have been hitting a lot of hurdles or you've been hitting a lot of stalls, especially where other involvements are concerned. Mercury is helping you to really get ahead on the rest of 2022. However, it's important to understand that Mercury is also going to be speeding up a lot of transactions, making this month feel all the more demanding every once in a while. 
This is also a time where you are noticing the rate with which you are drawing in all of this extra money is coming a lot more quickly, however, so that's always good news. And you may be also be getting some good news about a big break a partner or a, a business partner is also going through, just like we saw with the sun. However, between the 10th and the 22nd of the month, Mercury is retrograde here. And even when retrograde, Mercury in the 8th house can still be very advantageous because Mercury retrograde is letting a lot of you Scorpio people off easy. In fact, with Mercury retrograde in the 8th house, this is all about making sure everything gets back and goes back where it belongs. And this can have anything to do with credit, property, money, or opportunities of any kind. With Mercury retrograde in the 8th house, a lot of you Scorpio people may be collecting during this period, you know, especially if there are outstanding things owed to you, whether they are favors, whether it's maybe outstanding balances of money, things that you've loaned away, things that you've borrowed, a lot of that's coming back to you during this time. A lot of things that were either lost or given away or taken away are coming back to you. And we're also th seeing things that you have had that don't belong to you, things that maybe that were put upon you or ended up with you that really do not belong with you at all are also going back where they came from and where they belong. So it's a big switcheroo across the board for a lot of you. After the 22nd, Mercury retrograde in your seventh house of partnerships is putting you back on course with some kind of relationship goal or ideal that maybe you and a partner or an ally lost touch with or had to freeze once upon a time. Because Mercury retrograde in the seventh house is all about review, reversal, and retrieval as well. And so there could be something where maybe it's it, it got away from us or something else came up in recent history and we had to kind of just freeze and, and hold on this. Or maybe we just kind of lost touch with ourselves and now we're coming back to ourselves. We're coming back to the core of what this relationship or what this alliance is really all about. For those of you who are currently uh, single or available to new people, it could be very likely that a lot of you are getting a chance to explore an old relationship dynamic or an old relationship style with somebody that is reminiscent of an old crush or an old flame from your past. If you are interested in retrieving that, or some of you may be getting back in touch with your own relationship history and retrieving something lost in an old relationship as well. We have Jupiter, the planet of wealth, expansion, novelty, and luck, making a big move this month. On the 10th, Jupiter enters Aries, your sixth house of work, reputation, your schedule, and again, the teams that you work on, the services that you offer. And Jupiter is going to be here through the 28th of October. So a very long transit, and it's not only it's not the only one. Jupiter's going to come back and do this again in 2023. With Jupiter in the sixth house, this is a time where a lot of you Scorpio people are coming into, yes, a very wealthy way, especially because something is going on with either your business or your field that is allowing it to become not only a bigger uh, earner for you, but you are being put in a space where there is a chance to expand operations, either in your territory or maybe even get out of your immediate territory to connect with a lot more sources of revenue. Jupiter is also going to be growing your team, however you define your team or your work community. Things are becoming a lot more fast paced during this period. And you, excuse me, and you are also going to find out about some serious uh, big breaks that are going to allow you to transition in terms of maybe job profile, how you're seen, how your reputation kind of precedes you and put you in a space where you become sort of a chief authority when it comes to the work that you're putting out there and the people that you serve. And this could show up on the job, this could show up through your business, or like I said, it could be new territory, either figurative or, li uh, or literal. It all depends on what's going on in your personal chart. We're also seeing a life cycle shift getting underway as well. We have a 12 and 24 year cycle or thematic cycle 
resurrecting and coming back around at this time. So really pay attention to what was going on 12 years ago and 24 years ago when it comes to your work life and your finances and what good opportunities were put on the table or what were you being set up for there. You want to make sure that you are looking at where there was a big break we were getting set up for or coordinated with or where there may have been a beautiful financial opportunity that we are getting a chance to play with once again or a shift in our career. I love this aspect because what's also happening is that even things that didn't fully substantiate or things that you did have but you would like to call back are also going to be put on the table. And let's not forget we've also got Pluto retrograde here at the same time also focusing on resurrection and retrieval. We have a full moon, lunar eclipse this month, which is also very special. This is occurring in your sign, which is, of course, going to bring about the theme of culminations, transitions, and endings, which, yes, is falling in your sign, your first house. And so... Normally, a full moon has a two-week influence, but we're looking at a three-month influence because of the fact that this is, this is an eclipse. So this is consistent from May 16th to mid-August. With a full moon lunar eclipse in your sign, it is a time for a clean break with your life. What story, what era, what chapter, what involvements, what commitments, what attachments are you looking to extricate yourself from and put away for good? Because a full moon lunar eclipse in your first house is giving you a chance to eliminate so much from your lifestyle, from your you know attachments, like I said, anything that you know has been keeping you in the past or holding you to spaces, obligations, and people that you know you just can't bear to carry with you forward anymore. This is now the time. This full moon lunar eclipse is an extreme liberating big break for everybody. Use it well. We have a new moon that's also falling at the end of the month, just to wrap up the scope, and this is falling in Gemini, your eighth house of shared resources, passive income, as well as intimacy. But I feel like this is focusing a lot on the practical, and what's happening here is with the new moon in the eighth house, we have a two-week window period between the 30th of May and the 14th, 15th, depending on where you live in the world of June, where you are getting a chance to have a new income avenue sprout in your life. So a fresh new source of revenue, or if it's something coming back online, it's still going to be an addition to what you have, setting you up really nicely, especially when it comes to your personal and household wealth and abundance. A new moon in the 8th, this could be an investment or this could be something that is trickling in on a very consistent basis. This could be something that you're attaching to a business operation that you're a part of or something that is coming to you as just a beautiful gift. So that is what I've got for you, Scorpio people. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You know I appreciate it. And should you ever wish to get a session with me, go on ahead to my website. It's integrativemysticism.com.